here at this important time, God gives us a couple of different opportunities to make known our faith in Christ. And a nice opportunity, of course, is in our burial, where we, we say that the promises that we believed in, God has now fulfilled in Christ. And, and so we make that confession to know that there is a better place, and a place for us to have confidence and trust in. So I'm going to invite you to follow, as it's written in your worship folders here, our, our uh, Psalm 46 in our order of service. I will lift up my eyes unto the hills, from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord that hath made heaven and earth. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in times of trouble. And the dark bold is, is the yours. Therefore, Therefore we, will we will not fear, fear though, the though the earth gives way, way though, though the mountains be moved into, into the heart of the sea, sea though its waters, waters roar and foam, though the, though the mountains, mountains tremble at its swelling. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God, God is, is in the midst of her. Of her. She, she shall, shall not be moved. moved. God will help her when morning dawns. The nations rage, the kingdoms totter. He utters his voice, and the earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come, behold the works of the Lord, and how he has brought desolations on the earth. He makes, he makes the war cease to the end, the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the chariots with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord that hath made heaven and earth. Our hymn is Beautiful Savior, and I invite you to sing along with me, uh, as I'm sure your voices will be better than mine. <laughs> Beautiful Savior, King of creation, Son
Jesus is speaking these verses as he's preparing to leave the disciples. He's getting them ready for his crucifixion and his resurrection. And he says the following. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. And I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. And you know the way to where I am going. And Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. So how can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. This is the word of the Lord. Six months after the funeral, when Nora said her goodbyes to her husband of 45 years, her seven-year-old grandson was visiting with his mother when a man rang the doorbell of Nora's home. Little Jacob, seeking to be helpful, yelled out, I'll get him. Before Nora or her daughter could say anything, he had already opened the door and greeted the stranger with a hello. My name is Jacob. May I help you? Well, I'm here to see Robert Tillman. He's not here. Well, when will he be back, asked the man. He's not coming back, said the boy. Why not, asked the man. Well, he's gone to live with Jesus, said the boy. But my grandmother said that one day we'll go to see him. Would you like to come with us? What a good question. Jesus said, in my Father's house there are many rooms. And that should be a great comfort to us. To know that, that God does not serve partiality or reserve space only for those that uh, uh, reach some qualification or standard. That God is building many, many rooms in his house for those who confess that they love Jesus, their Savior. And it's not first come, first serve. There's no shortage. God leaves room for all who come to him in faith. Jesus leaves the earth for the express purpose of preparing a place for us. And he will lead us home to it. That's his promise to his disciples. And you know, Jesus always keeps his promises. That's the wonderful thing about God. He cannot lie. He always tells us the truth. So that when we look to times like this, it is the promises of God that give us most encouragement because if God said it, you can depend on it. Today, God has promised us that he would lead us home to this house. That his promise to his disciples and to us is one that is binding. And today we declare in accordance with the words of Jesus that the journey is over for Dolly and John. They've made that journey together. Think about it. In life they were together, in death they are together, and in eternity they will be together, all because of God's promises. We have a great God who loves us so much that he knows our needs, and he provides for them every day. The way to God's house leads straight through his Son. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the light. No one comes to the Father except through me. And Jesus wants to lead us home to the Father. So we have comfort in knowing that if we follow Jesus, if we hold faith in him, then we will never be disappointed. He will show us the way home. After all, he's the one who's been there and come back. And will go again. Through Jesus, all God's children find their way home. And we'll have the comfort of unity with God for all the rest of eternity. No separation, no loneliness or sorrow, perfect peace because we are truly home. And God always keeps his promises. When I moved from Kansas to Maryland, I had spent a week, ten days at home with my mother and my grandmother. My grandmother was dying, and I said to Grandma before I left, Grandma, the next time I see you will be here as I do your memorial service. 
And she said, yes, I know, and, and we were very close. We spent a lot of time together. Every night I would spend an evening having coffee with her, and my wife would go, and my daughter at that time. And we would uh, always tell stories, and whatever grandmother need, I, I, would, I would do. And, and she just was a very important part of my life. And we weren't looking forward to that time when we had to say goodbye. So we made a pact, the two of us. We said, we're not going to say goodbye this time. No, we're both Christians. We know that God keeps his promises. So she said, let's do this. Let's just say, see you when I get home. And we do. And that was the promise I made to her when, when I buried her. I said, Grandma, I'll see you when I get home. And she said, don't worry, I'll be waiting. <laughs> now the truth about God is that for everyone who believes in Jesus Christ, we have a home. And God always keeps his promises, so I know that it's there for me and for you and for every Christian who declares that Jesus is their Savior. John and Dolly, they both believed. They both held in their heart the truth that that Christ was their Savior. Dolly had 102 years, is that right? What a wonderful living testimony of her faith in Christ. And how mighty stories she had to tell. Well, I've been writing down for some time now questions I have for when I get to heaven. I want to ask, I want to ask Moses if he could see the fish along the side when they parted the Red Sea and walked through. I want to ask Elijah what it was like when Elijah came down from heaven and struck the sacrifice and then jumped over and got the other one. I've got a lot of them that I've been saving up to ask. And God has promised us an eternity with those whom we love, so we'll be able to get caught up forever and ever and ever. And that's his promise to us, that even death itself cannot separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. So I cling to those promises. When I said goodbye to my father a couple years ago, I knew that the one promise we shared was the promise that Christ would take us to be together again. And so each time when I kneel at the altar, we have a huge picture window in our altar at our church in Kingsville. And there is a picture of, of various uh, important characters in, in history uh, in the church, Moses, Elijah, and various others. But there's one space left open in the window. And I asked them when they made the window to leave that space. And the artist was very concerned about that. She said, this will look odd, this will look strange. And I said, that's exactly what I wanted to do. Because I want everyone who comes to this altar to understand that their loved ones now have taken that place. And from now on, every time they kneel at that altar to be joined with the, the, the saints and, and all the company of heaven, that dad or mom or grandma is there now too, rejoicing and uniting with us. So that's your thought, and that's that's the gift I give to you to take, that you're not separated. There is a temporary time where you'll not see each other, but even in worship, God promises we'll all be together. So hold to that, and rejoice that God has created a place for you to be forever, and never again will a tear touch your eyes, except the tear of joy. May the Lord bless you as you contemplate those very important things. Let's go on. We're going to uh, continue with the prayer. So would you please rise? I was going to try that. Thank you. <clears throat> Merciful Father, Lord of life, with whom live the spirits of those who depart in the faith, we thank you for the blessings of body and soul that you granted Dolly and John, this departed brother and sister, whose earthly remains we now lay to rest. Above all, we rejoice at your gracious promise to all your servants living and departed that we shall rise again at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Hear the word of our Lord from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Listen, I'll tell you a mystery. 
We will not all speak, but we'll all be changed in a flash in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable. We will be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality. And when the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh, death, is your victory? Where, O oh, death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin. And the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And so now we commit their body to the ground. Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, in the sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life, through our Lord Jesus Christ, who will change our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body, by the power that enables him to subdue all things unto himself. May God the Father, who created this body, God the Son, who by his blood redeemed this body, and God the Holy Spirit, who by holy baptism sanctified this body to be his temple, Keep these remains to the day of the resurrection of all flesh. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray together. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will, will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread, bread and, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, temptation but, but deliver, deliver us from evil. For thine, thine is the kingdom, kingdom and the power and the glory, forever, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, by the death of your Son, Jesus Christ, you destroyed death, and by his rest in the tomb you sanctified the graves of your saints. By his glorious resurrection you brought life and immortality to life, so that all who die in him abide in peace and hope. Receive our thanks for the victory over death and the grave which he won for us. And keep us in everlasting fellowship with all that wait for him on earth and with all in heaven who are with him who is the resurrection and the life, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 And may the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Church has traditionally spoken this word of promise, Christ is risen, he is risen indeed. Shall we do it again? Christ is risen. He is, he is risen, risen indeed. Let us go forth in peace in the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. And we'll continue with our closing hymn for all the saints. For all the saints who from their labors rest Fortress and their mind.
on behalf of the President of the United States, the United States of America, and a grateful nation, please set this flag as a symbol of our appreciation for your loved ones' honorable and faithful service. Place privately at this time. We ask the pallbearers to step up to help us bring the casket out to the hearse, and everyone else, please follow us out of the chapel. Um, there's some paperwork back here for you to sign, and a map for you to take your position. When you come back here, you, the office is right across the way. Um, there is a map that uh, you have here, but also if you just want to stop in the office, they can give you a map of the location. Okay. 